Between April and May 2019, there have been numerous incidents of grand theft, burglary, unlawful possession of narcotics and paraphernalia, reckless driving on sidewalks, hit and runs, property damage, and driving under the influence, all within a one mile radius of San Jose State University. When thinking of street adjacent life, it is important to consider the role of safety and law enforcement in these streetscapes. Team enforcement poses the question, how does enforcement's perceptions of safety map onto interactions of physical street space and patterns of street adjacent behavior? We collect data from interviews and ride-alongs with university police, crime statistics, photography, videography, and semi-structured observations to understand law enforcement's view of their roles in streetscapes in San Jose. We found five main themes in our analysis, situational awareness, impacts of infrastructure, culture shock, enforcement discretion, and judgmental impairing substances. Officers also value their educational role in the local community, and we pose possible design features around how these ideas of education and community may be changed by the presence of semi-autonomous vehicles in the near future. Situational awareness, or rather the lack thereof, was a high concern for the officers we interviewed. Being plugged in, according to Officer Kirk, was not only an unsafe behavior in of itself, but encourages or increases the chances of unsafe behavior to be enacted upon individuals in things like mugging and other crimes. Officer Kirk also expressed particular concern for jaywalking, where when pedestrians cross active streets in unsanctioned ways and at unsafe times, and how this unsafe behavior seems combined with a lack of situational awareness for both pedestrians jaywalking and motorists driving in the streets. Officer Kirk explained that stale yellows were often sites of unsafe behavior for motorists and pedestrians. A stale yellow is when a yellow traffic light is about to turn red and motorists decide to push to go through the light anyway, sometimes not fully clearing an intersection before the light turns red. Pedestrians sometimes begin jaywalking at this time as well, and these combined unsafe behaviors could result in traffic harm to both parties. A lack of situational awareness is often combined with other unsafe behaviors, and it is important to note that many street-adjacent behaviors are often combined and increase the chances of harm. Recently, new street infrastructure in the form of green pylons has been added to mark bike lanes around campus and downtown. Officers Sullivan and Kirk expressed concern for the new infrastructure objects and the resulting new patterns of behavior. Officer Kirk noted that the new bike lane sometimes forced vehicles into oncoming traffic lane to avoid pedestrians, and Officer Sullivan remarked that the streets are now narrower and that a drunk driver recently sideswiped five parked cars. In an effort to enhance the safety of the streets for wheeled pedestrians, such as bicyclists, scooterists, skateboarders, etc., the city of San Jose appears to have initiated sudden changes to street-adjacent culture, and it may take time for people to adapt to these infrastructure changes. In addition to permanent infrastructure changes, temporary and time-based changes also affect street-adjacent behaviors. Both officers noted changes to volume of traffic and incidents during the beginning of semesters, special events, and when construction affects traffic patterns. Pedestrians and motorists often must alter their behaviors and schedules to work around these changes and incorporate these alterations into their street-adjacent behaviors. Officer Kirk spoke about how these changes could lead to culture shock and that one of their roles as an officer was to educate people on how best to safely navigate these changes. San Jose is a large city hosting many international visitors, recent immigrants, and other persons unused to urban environments. Often, newcomers have different perceptions of what constitutes safe and unsafe street behaviors. Road signs, construction, and street adjacent signage require familiarity for people to be compliant. Officer Kirk explains that part of their role as an officer was to educate through teachable moments on what was considered appropriate street-adjacent behavior and safe or unsafe reactions to urban traffic patterns. New forms of transportation are also a form of culture shock and can be also seen as an educational opportunity. Motorized and non-motorized scooters, bikes, skateboards, hoverboards, and even unicycles are found in streets, bike lanes, and on sidewalks and it can be unclear where those non-pedestrian non-drivers should be in streetscapes. Officer Kirk explained that many students are unprepared for life on an open campus and that the presence of crazy people, the homeless, often results in calls from students. Officer Kirk describes these incidents as teachable moments for students. Officers will respond to these calls by quietly asking the homeless individuals who are often suffering from mental illness to move along and explain to students the difference between safe and unsafe situations. 
Sometimes Officer Kirk would find these students harassing homeless persons around the campus, either actively by antagonizing them or passively by lacking situational awareness, being plugged in, and not seeing the person and running over them with their bikes, skateboards, or scooters. While Officer Kirk viewed such interactions as teachable moments or educational opportunities and community outreach, Officer Sullivan, an SJSU alumna, referred to homeless persons and others as roof raff and as a possible unsafe presence on and around campus. It seems ideas related to culture shock vary among enforcement. Officer Kirk described the difference between the literal language of a law and an officer's interpretation of a law given a specific situation. When Officer Kirk spots unsafe or illegal behaviors, it is often up to them to decide if the infraction requires enforcement intervention. This is usually followed by a series of steps. Pulling over the offending party, discussing with the detainee why they are doing the unsafe or illegal behavior, assessing whether the detainee knows that the behavior is wrong, checking their past records, and if the record is fairly clear of past infractions, this can become a teachable moment. Teachable moments, according to Officer Kirk, are opportunities to strengthen relationships between enforcement and campus community. It would reflect poorly on the department to always cite unsafe or illegal behaviors or activities. Officer Kirk linked culture shock and sheltered students to the unsafe behaviors around alcohol and drugs. These students are often experiencing a new degree of freedom and are not as well versed in regulating their behavior in street adjacent environments. Alcohol and drugs impair judgment and negatively affect situational awareness. Officer Sullivan also discusses the 2 a.m. tornado of unsafe behavior when frat parties spill out into downtown streets. Students moving in between streets and parties and under the influence can be hit by vehicles. There's a temporal element associated with these behaviors. At night, when downtown bars close, patrons transition to pedestrians and often become unpredictable. Fights break out on sidewalks and move into streets in traffic. Both pedestrian and vehicular must move out of the way of these people. Officers link the unpredictability to poor decisions, leading to various unsafe behaviors when these substances affect streetscapes. The UPD officers we spoke with expressed value in building and maintaining positive educational relationships with the community. Currently, UPD participates in tabling at campus events, but there is little student interest in approaching these officers at these events. Officers attempt to provide campus communities with information around safe and unsafe behaviors, and Officer Kirk mentioned that they would like to draw a bigger crowd and have more time to educate the campus community, perhaps by becoming more involved in student life on campus. Officer Kirk spoke to one of our researchers about safety campaigns occasionally done by UPD as one of the ways enforcement tries to curtail unsafe behaviors and educate the community. When an unsafe behavior becomes particularly prevalent, UPD will focus on dissuading these behaviors by increasing enforcement. For example, setting up speed traps to pull over and possibly cite more motorists speeding or running red lights. As we think of impacts of semi-autonomous vehicles, we might ask ourselves how the presence of these vehicles would change these ideas around community, relationship building, education, and safety for enforcement. For a possible design future, we wonder what role semi-autonomous or driverless vehicles operated by UPD might play in a safety campaign around jaywalking, a particularly unsafe and endemic behavior according to Officer Kirk. Autonomous vehicles could impact a safety campaign in two potential ways, as a tool for surveillance or as physical deterrence. The presence of enforcement vehicles is believed to be a possible deterrent in of itself. People may be less likely to jaywalk when an enforcement vehicle, and by extension, officers, could be nearby. These vehicles could also have cameras or other data collecting instruments to document people jaywalking, much like cameras on traffic lights that automatically photograph vehicles running red lights. This could help capture jaywalking and offer a more consistent way for to issue citations or reprimands, hopefully leading to less jaywalking overall in certain prime locations downtown and campus adjacent. When asked about the possible role of autonomous vehicles, Officer Kirk responded with some optimism. If some of their enforcement tasks could be automated by these vehicles, there could be more time and energy to dedicate to community outreach and education. Officer Sullivan, however, did not express much enthusiasm over the possible future role of autonomous vehicles in enforcement. Officer Sullivan equated autonomous vehicles with AI and stated, 
Human error is a natural thing and I cannot imagine AI fixing problems. Someone still has to run it. Officer Sullivan did not want to be personally involved with using this technology or anything similar. As we look into possible design features around autonomous or driverless vehicles, whether used directly by enforcement or not, we must consider that there will be mixed opinions and periods of adjustment, similar to this culture shock mentioned by Officer Kirk. Culture shock manifests as changes to patterns and elements of unpredictability from people interacting with streetscapes. There are important notes to consider future research for autonomous vehicles. Thank you for watching our video. We would like to thank UPD for participating in our research and offering us interviews and ride-alongs, Dr. Melissa Sefkin and Dr. Jan English-Lewick for making this research possible.